The American racing scene in the late 1960s to early 1970s was truly something special to behold. And while many people's minds go straight to drag racing as the primary type of racing that American automakers were competing in, that wasn't always quite the case. While the emphasis stateside may have been primarily on straight line speed when it came to muscle cars, every single major American manufacturer still offered a balanced, handling focused version of their smaller pony cars to compete in the SCCA Trans Am series, which was all about track and road course driving. And for American automakers, this is where the Mustangs, Camaros, Firebirds, Javelins, and even a few Mopars would go door to door around various tracks with their high revving, low displacement V8s to see who would be victorious. And one of those Mopars that reached icon status was the 1970 Plymouth AAR Cuda. And with the Cuda, like any real race car at the time, Plymouth had to build a series of production versions of this car to make it eligible for race use. This is the story of those cars. Hello everyone, welcome back to another episode of Rare Cars. This is the channel where we dive into the past and explore some of the rarest and most iconic vehicles of all time. If you want to see more short form documentaries on unique cars like the AAR Cuda or other cars like the AMC Rebel, then make sure to subscribe to the Rare Cars YouTube channel and smash that notification button for our weekly uploads. But now, let's find out what made this high strung performance CUDA so special. As mentioned in the introduction, the AAR CUDA had racing in its DNA from birth. AAR itself actually stands for All American Racers, which is the name of a racing team founded by Dan Gurney and Carol Shelby in 1964, but the AAR CUDA itself was not born until 1970. This generation of Plymouth CUDAs would be built on the E-body Mopar chassis, which it shared with its sister car, the Dodge Challenger. There was a bit of a catch here though, even being sister cars that utilized essentially the exact same engine combinations, there were actually some pretty stark differences between the Cuda and the Challenger, besides the obvious styling changes. The Cuda was actually a bit smaller of a car. Compared to the Challenger, it had a two inch shorter wheelbase, it was actually just five inches shorter in overall length, and the Cuda was 1.7 inches narrower than the Challenger. Add all that together and you got a slightly more nimble and tossable car with the Cuda than you did with the Challenger albeit not by much, but it was still something. The actual race car versions of the Cuda that would be raced in the SCCA racing series would actually utilize a very stout 305 cubic inch small block as per regulation, which made near 450 horsepower. Now, these were full bore race motors, which obviously could not be used in the street versions of the car that Plymouth had to build. SCCA homologation requirements dictated that 2,500 road going versions of these cars would need to be built to make the cars eligible to race in their respective class. So Plymouth would go on to build 2,700 AAR Cudas for street use, thus qualifying them to be able to race. With the fun fact being that they built every single one of these AAR Cudas in just five weeks. And in the true spirit of the race version of the car, the street Cudas would need to be able to run a small block Mopar engine in order to help homologate the 305 cubic inch engine that they would run in the race car. So Plymouth would go ahead and utilize the strongest small block in the Mopar lineup, which was the 340. Now the 340 is a very interesting engine. Everybody who I've ever heard of speak about the 340 in particular has only had great things to say about it. And the AAR Cuda got the ultimate version of the 340, running at a 10 half to one compression ratio and adorned with three two barrel holly carburetors, a special set of heads, forged rods and forged pistons, a lightweight Edelbrock aluminum intake, 
and solid lifters. On paper, these road-going AAR CUDA motors made 290 horsepower at 5,000 RPM and around 345 foot-pounds of torque at 3,200 RPM, which, as we know today, was a severely discounted power figure. In actuality, these 340s were making somewhere in the ballpark of 340 to 350 horsepower and around 370 foot-pounds of torque, which gave them that mythical one horsepower per cubic inch stat line. Making around 350 horsepower and still being able to rev up to about 6,500 RPM if you wanted to push it, these 340s were a wicked fun engine to run on the street. If you wanted a more subdued driver, you could also opt for a 727 Torque Flight Automatic with your AAR CUDA. But I would argue for the true driving experience as it was intended, you would have been better off optioning yours with the 4 speed manual transmission and that iconic pistol grip shifter. A 355 geared sure grip rear also came standard with an optional 391 gear set available for those who really wanted some shorter gearing. And that isn't even where the fun stuff ends for the AAR CUDA. We are actually just getting started. To give these CUDAs the race car look and feel for the street that Plymouth wanted, they put a side exit exhaust on these cars that dumped out right in front of the rear wheels, which added that extremely visceral experience. On the exterior, the AAR Cudas also received an added set of front canards, a fiberglass hood that actually featured a fully functional hood scoop to help feed those three carburetors, and a slick ducktail spoiler in the rear. Add on the AAR Cudas special side stripe package, which was also something to behold. These side stripes ran nearly the whole width of the car, and each section of the stripe gradually decreased in width from the front of the car to the back of the car until they ended up getting super thin. It was actually a super unique and pretty cool design for the car. Couple these side stripes with the matte black hood, and you had some really nice contrasting colors with the matte black stripes and hood when paired with one of the ridiculously bright colors that Plymouth offered these CUDAs in at the time. It really had to be a sight to behold back in 1970, hearing the screaming 340 echoing through the mountains, only to see a bright green AAR CUDA going for a nice spirited drive early in the morning or late at night. The AAR CUDAs essentially got the exact same handling package as the TA Challengers did, which included upgraded front and rear sway bars, and an overall more handling-focused suspension. They also had front disc brakes and rear drum brakes, and utilized a modest 15 by 7 inch wheel on all four corners. These AAR CUDAs were no Porsche 911, but for a 3,600 pound V8 powered pony car, they could turn pretty well. When it comes to actual performance figures, the 1970 Plymouth AAR CUDA, when tested in period, could do about a 5.8 second 0 to 60 and clock the quarter mile at a modest 14.4 seconds. Which isn't bad, but again, these cars were not built as drag strip brawlers. If you wanted that, there was the 426 Hemi, which would have made them a much more apt choice for drag racing. When looking at the AAR Cuda for what it was, which was Plymouth's attempt to build a homologation spec streetcar that carried as much of the character of the race car into the road car while also giving it some semblance of manners, I would say that they succeeded in doing just that. While the actual race versions of the Cudas never really performed extremely well in the series they raced in, they still left a mark on the industry enough to become sought-after collector cars even if they only finished 5th in the 1970 Trans Am series with a total of 15 points. Today, around 1,500 or so AAR CUDAs exist in the official AAR CUDA registry, so there are still a good amount of these cars out there and unaccounted for. 
some 1,200 or so. Haggerty currently values these 1970 AAR Cudas in good condition at around 84,000 bucks, which means that exceptionally clean, low mileage survivor cars are easily into the six figure range. Which begs the question if you had $83,000 laying around, would you buy a real driver quality AAR Cuda or would you build your own hopped up 340 small block Barracuda to your liking? Comment down below what you would do. But I'm afraid that brings us to the end of the short history of the 1970 AAR Cuda, the one year homologation special from Plymouth. If you enjoyed this video, we would greatly appreciate it if you could drop a like and also share this video with other enthusiasts. Also, please make sure that you are subscribed to the Rare Cars YouTube channel and smash the notification bell for more documentary style videos just like this on the world's most interesting cars. Until next time, enthusiasts.